YouTube, welcome to our live broadcast tonight. It is Tuesday. We are just waiting for our Facebook to pop on and there it is. We are going to discuss intermittent fasting and the possibility for fasting to help or can intermittent fasting help heal our brain, I guess would be the more appropriate way to say this. So I'm gonna share with you um, some information that I found when I was doing some research and hopefully you guys will be as excited about this as I am as far as what it is that we are trying to do for our brains so that we can be uh, functioning, um, happy, healthy women as we start going through this aging process. So um, um, I'm going to quickly introduce myself and then I'm going to get right to it tonight. So my name is Diane. Thank you so much for jumping on. If you are new, please take a second to hit that uh, like button on Facebook or that subscribe button on YouTube. That way you will be notified when we go live or we upload content to either one of those platforms. We generally go live here Monday through Thursday, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And for the most part, we do discuss um, information in regards to intermittent fasting and how we can use fasting to heal our bodies. I uh, was really sick a couple of years ago as I was going through some hormonal changes with my own body and I found myself pre-diabetic and insulin resistant. I had some thyroid issues going on and I was feeling like I had some of the signs and symptoms of an autoimmune disorder and um, I had all of those things going on despite the fact that I was in the health um, industry coaching uh, women on health and fitness um, and had just suffered some illnesses due to hormonal changes and the fact that I had been dieting and gaining and losing weight pretty much my whole life. So I used intermittent fasting myself to reverse some of those health conditions and now I'm a 51 year old woman who's very happy, very healthy, um, and no longer suffering, for, suffering from any of those things, um, including thyroid or autoimmune um, signs or signals. Um, so I'm totally healthy. Now what I do in this platform is share what I've learned through that process and help coach you um, if you are an aging woman who's going through some similar things. So tonight we're gonna talk about some brain health issues and if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna adjust this really quick and hopefully I won't touch a camera lens. Okay, there we go. Um, and so I'm gonna share with you guys some research that I have found that I think you guys are going to really like and let you know that you're on the right track. So um, as usual, when I talk about anything that's like sciencey or very factual, I always like to refer to my notes because I can get um, sidetracked very e easily. So I'm going to make sure I stay on course and give you guys all the information that you need so that you can confidently move forward with what it is that you're doing fasting. And I also know that oftentimes as women, we tend to struggle with what we're doing in regards to nutrition because of societal things or lifestyle things or emotional things that we have connected to us with food. So what I'm really trying to hone in on this week with you guys is the proof of what fasting can do for you to heal you. So that when you get into that position where maybe you're emotionally pulled into eating or something in life happens and you resort to eating, um, and not that eating's a bad thing, but we wanna make sure that we are taking advantage of the science and the information that's out there so we can heal. And so if we can eat in the correct way and we can fast in the correct way and we can do some things to benefit us as we're aging, then we can go through this aging process with grace and really not have to suffer um, either any longer or any more as we move through life. So here's some cool information. Um, now I, I got a lot of this information from um, someone by the name of Mark Matson, who works for the National Institute on Aging and he's a neuroscientist so he studies the brain. And what he said in the beginning of uh, the article and the video that I watched that he was talking about was that by the year 2050, 15 million people will be suffering from Alzheimer's disease. 15 million, like that's a lot of people with brain damage. And a lot of this brain damage and a lot of this suffering with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease can really be controlled and a lot of it can be slowed down and hopefully at some point it can be reversed. And, and I've shared with you here before um, that when I, was in my sixth stage, 
and I, and I was insulin resistant and was doing the whole diabetic thing and all that, that my memory was really bad. And, and I know that I still suffer a little bit um, because words slip by me. I, I still have a really hard time memorizing things and remembering things, which is why I always try to take notes um, and refer to them. Um, but it was really bad and, and, and it's worst at the point where I think I was the sickest before I started fasting when I couldn't remember my kids names and I couldn't remember where I would park my car when I would go into a store and literally would draw a complete blank of what aisle I was down, what direction I was going, where my car was parked. So I had to always park in the same place and always park by a cart return so that I would at least have a general idea of where my car was so I wasn't that lady walking up and down every aisle like tooting my, you know, my horn on my alarm uh, trying to find my car. But the scariest part was when I could not remember my own kids names when I was looking right at them and so I knew something serious was going on with me in my brain um, and so when I started researching fasting and Alzheimer's and what it was doing to help reverse some of those signs of Alzheimer's disease I was really excited about it and and this in cancer are probably the two reasons why I fast long and I fast clean because I don't want to take a chance that I'm messing up something that could really do good for me. So what he was talking about and what, how he explained why fasting is so great um, for what it is that we're trying to do with our brain health was because when you're fasted or you're intermittent fasting or calorie restrictive is basically how it's all summarized, is that when you're in an intermittent fasted state, that enhances the ability of nerve cells to repair DNA. So if you have damaged cells in your brain and you're in a true clean fasted state, what happens is your body takes on a stress. And when it's in that stress, it actually has the ability to, to do repair work. And so we always think of stress as being something bad, but in this situation, stress is a good thing because your body thinks that there's no food available because there's not when you're in a true fasted state. And so it resorts to um, finding its own energy source to keep your body functioning. And that energy source is those are those fat cells. And when you're burning fat cells, you produce ketones. And the ketones are really the key to what it is that we're trying to achieve when we're in a fasted state. And that's really where that repair happens. And we've talked on this um, platform before about autophagy as well. And it all bundles up into the same process in the end. When we go from a glycogen burner or sugar burner to a fat burner producing ketones, then we work into those stages of autophagy. As soon as we're burning, um, as soon as those ketones are pre present in our system, we are in that repair state. And that's really where our body has the ability to take those damaged cells and reproduce them and then put them right back into our system as healthy cells. So this is all done through re reducing your energy intake. So, you know, we talk about calorie deficit and we talk about, um, you know, being um, having our metabolism increased. All of those things are, you know, the result of being in that reduced energy intake. And remember, when we take food in, that's an energy source. So when you're fasting and you put your body in a window where you're going X amount of hours without taking in energy, you're creating what's called an, uh, an uh, you know, that's when you're reducing your energy intake. Um, you know, and it's called calorie restriction or intermittent fasting or any of those things. Um, so when you have your own body's energy, you know, working up and firing up your metabolism, that's when your body has the ability to burn your own body as fat. So, you know, I talk about the fact that when we're burning fat, um, our body, our body knows to go into our own pantry, right? So we have our own pantry system with our body and that's where we've taken the food that we've consumed that we didn't use and we just put it conveniently in a pantry. Now, if we constantly keep consuming and constantly, uh, you know, when we don't go into that pantry to burn off that stored food, that's when we start to get um, a lot of these diseases that are associated with sugars or um, a lot of um, diseases that are associated with um, obesity. 
So we want to go into that pantry. We want to be uh, that kind of body that's not always relying on the readily available food or energy. We want a body that is comfortable and confident and very um, wise about going into our pantry system and taking stuff off the shelf and using that as our energy intake. And in our course, um, we, you know, we talk about, we have a whole lesson on why it is you don't have to count calories. And if you're in a truly fasted state, and this is why I don't count calories and I don't count macros anymore, is because when your body's efficient at burning fat, it knows how to count its own calories. And so whatever you take in as a new source of energy, your body knows what calorie intake it needs to keep your metabolism fired up at the, whatever level your body needs. And when you're in a true fasted state, your metabolism um, burn rate, your metabolic burn rate rises because you're so efficient at burning calories. So your body pulls from your pantry to make up where you are creating a natural deficit by just not eating throughout the day. So it's a super, super smart system and it's really how you lose weight, how you decrease the inflammation and how you get your body into that um, state of autophagy where you're burning those ketones and you can repair your DNA. So it's super, super smart way for your body to run, but you have to go from being a glycogen burner to a fat burner and that's where a lot of people really get tripped up. Because again, we listen to so many of those outside sources that say you can put this in your system and you can put this in your system and if it's 15 calories, you can put this in your system. But if you really think about the science of healing and the potential that you have to undo damage that's been done to your cells, you really want to keep yourself into that in that clean fasted state so you have the opportunity to do amazing things like fix your brain. Um, now, the reason why your brain um, becomes so much healthier when you're fasting is because fasting creates a challenging environment for your brain. So your, your brain responds to this challenge, um, and the challenge is just not having food, by um, activating adaptive stress response pathways. And that basically means that your, your body, your brain is active, right? So, and that's what we hear about all the time as we age, right? We, we have to keep our brain active so you can do Sudoku puzzles or crossword puzzles or, you know, play games or, or, you know, uh, do all kinds of brain activity, but fasting can also do that for you. So fasting can just keep your brain active enough to stay sharp because you're always putting in a stress situation which is going to challenge your brain, which is going to keep your brain active, which is going to keep your brain functioning, and it's going to ultimately keep it healthy. So when we're in a fed state all the time, our, our responses to our brains aren't, aren't the same because they're not under stress. So our brain isn't challenged and our brain isn't required to do work. And when it's not required to do work, it shuts off. And the more we have it shut off, um, then the less likely it's going to fire on when we need it to. So we, we're in a fasted state. We're challenging our brain by causing stress. And when you're challenging your brain, you're going to keep your brain sharp. Now, the same thing happens when we um, engage in vigorous exercise. So, you know, for me in my 30s and early 40s, vigorous exercise was definitely not a problem. But today, it's almost like it doesn't even excite me to think about what I have to do to be in a vigorous exercise state to keep my brain functioning. So what I'm really loving about fasting for myself where I'm at today is that I can do moderate type of exercise and fast and get the same brain benefits. And one of the first, I think, um, aha moments or one of the first responses and feelings and signals that women get when they really get into that clean fasted state is how clear their brain is and how um, how how much more um, focused they are when they're doing their daily activities or, or how they function when they're at work. And, and we call that the energized sense of calm. When your brain is just on fire, like you can think through things, you can get tasks done, you can remember your kids' names and where you parked your car. And that's just because we've allowed our brain to really process through everything that was 
fogging it up and slowing it down and we've reignited the fire in our brain and we've caused that stress and we've caused that energy to go back into our brain let that DNA repair itself and you can actually regain some of that brain function, which for me was, again, one of probably the first things that I noticed and um, was super excited about to just know that I, I was going to be okay as far as my brain went. Um, so the science part of this is, and then I'll kind of explain it how uh, Mark Matthews explained it in his video and in his article. He said, both fasting and vigorous exercise increase a protein in the brain called neurotropic factors, which basically promotes the production of new nerve cells from stem cells. Ketones are an alternate fuel, and then ketones are that thing that really fire up that production of those uh, neurotropic factors and allow that DNA to be repaired. So this is why also um, fasting is used with um, children who have um, epilepsy. And I guess this happened back in the days with the Greeks where when people had seizures or were suffering from epilepsy, they locked them in a room and they locked them in the room for days. And what happened is the lack of food that these people had when they were locked away caused their seizures to go away. So, um, so you know, back before they, you know, we had the science behind all of this, they thought that, um, you know, being locked away caused the demons to go away. And really what it was, was that the fact that these people were denied food and they put, were put in a fasted state and they had ketones present in their body, the ketones themselves stopped the seizures um, and were able to um, alleviate some of the symptoms with the epilepsy. So just fascinating stuff going back in history about the benefits of what fasting can do for our brain. So um, so why is it then, if fasting is so great and provides all these healing opportunities and can do things like um, you know, reverse some of those initial signs of Alzheimer's disease and, and help with dementia and alleviate seizures with uh, you know, people who, are, who have epilepsy, why are more people not taking advantage of this and fasting? And a lot of the reasons why more people aren't fasting is because society doesn't want us to. You know, the, the food industry doesn't want us to stop eating. Um, it doesn't do the food industry any good to go 20 hours a day without needing food. Um, and, and I know for myself especially, like our, I eat very little in a day and feel absolutely amazing. Um, I just don't require that much food. I don't require that many calories. And so I don't need to eat that much. Um, our kids are the same way. We just stop overfeeding them. Um, the, the diet industry is not going to do well because there's no plan to sell. You just go several hours a day with doing nothing. And doing nothing is not a profitable business. Um, and then you factor in the pharmaceutical industry um, when people can figure out and learn how to heal themselves and we don't have to rely on pharmaceuticals or for a heavy medical treatments, then you know that's not going to be widely accepted as well. And I believe I heard a quote, something along the lines like one th third of your food um, is dependent on you as a person, and two thirds of your food is dependent on your doctor. Meaning that you know we need to be obese to keep a lot of industries going. We need to be sick to keep a lot of industries going. And the more we take control of that ourselves, and the more we can reverse things for ourselves, then the less we're going to dependent on these industries that are that. Need Need our money to survive and so um, intermittent fasting and the ability to do nothing to cure yourself and to and to make yourself feel better and to help yourself lose weight um, is not profitable and so we get the pressure from society and we get pressure from our friends who don't get it who think you're starving to death and we get pressure from maybe you know immediate family who doesn't understand what you're doing because the thought of not eating all day seems so backwards from what we've been trained to believe. And I know for a fact the reason I got so sick a couple years ago is because I've dieted my entire life. Um, you know, and it, I had someone today ask me like, how is it that I can say, how is it that I can coach women on getting healthy and losing weight when it looks like I've never been overweight? Well, I've never been overweight because I've always just been 20 something pounds overweight. I've always lost that same 20 something pounds my entire life. 
you lose it, you gain it, you lose it, you gain it, you lose it, you gain it. And that's the diet mentality that we've all, you know, grown up on. And, but I've been on a diet since I was in elementary school. Um, and I've lost weight and I've gained it back. And I was on a diet when I joined the military because I was on their fat girl program. And I was, you know, on a diet after I had my son when I weighed 217 pounds when I weighed in on the, my delivery day. And, you know, it's like, it's that same thing. We are just constantly gaining weight and losing weight. People who aren't happy being heavy or, or having extra weight on them are probably at worse risk because you've done the yo-yo thing your whole life. Um, and the gaining and the losing really does wreak havoc on our hormonal system. So fortunately, I'm cured and I won't be doing that 20 pounds on and off anymore. I will just fast. I will always just fast and always be able to maintain what it is I've been maintaining and I've done it for a year. So I'm pretty convinced that it's going to stay. Now I'm doing it for my brain. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to share with you guys on here that he was saying. Um, so one piece of advice that I, that I heard when I was doing some research today was communication is key when we are trying to change the way society goes. And that's what I absolutely love about our community here is that we are very open with our communication. We're very willing to share what it is that we're doing. Um, and we're very willing to support and help each other. And I wouldn't be able to spread my good news if you guys weren't here with me every night and then in turn sharing your good news and sharing your results and doing the work. Now, the key to all of this and what I always say is that you really don't want to play around when you're in your fasted state. If you're going to if you're going to commit to fasting and you want to reap the benefits of fasting, you really have to just surrender the idea that when you're in a fasted state, you're in a true fasted state. You want to get your body from a sugar burner to a fat burner to a ketone uh, producer to a person that can take advantage of the states of autophagy and that whole cell rejuvenation and repairing your DNA. Why would you ever want to take yourself midpoint out of a fasted state for creamer, sugar, uh, BCAAs during your workout, gum, mints, like the lemon in your water. Like I am so afraid of the possibility of fooling myself during my fast thinking and I'm doing a great thing when in fact I'm really not doing it as great as I could be for the flavor or the food of something. And so um, I, I highly encourage you, especially if you're fasting for health reasons and you want to do some maybe brain repair or you want to do some um, you know some of the hormonal repair that we have to do as women and remember your body at a, at a certain point will not lose weight unless you're hormonally repaired and um, and so if you are going through some hormonal changes you have to do the repair in order to keep that weight off and keep that fat off your body that hormonal fat is not comfortable it, it makes us feel um, bad as women but our body doesn't want it either. And when that hormonal weight sits on us, that's a sign and a signal that we need to make some changes. And as soon as you make those changes, that will go away. The brain fog is not normal. Our body does not, our brain does not want to be foggy. Our brain wants to work. Our brain wants to be sharp. Our brain wants to be healthy and function. And so when it starts to get foggy and it starts to forget things, that's a sign and a signal that you have to make some changes unless you want to keep going down that road. And if you're not happy with something, then you have to be open and you have to be willing to make the change. And with intermittent fasting, you have to make that change that if you're going to fast, you just fast. And when your body gets healed, you have some flexibility and some opportunity to not have to fast so long. And you can fast, you know, for five days a week and not fast for two days a week, but you have to get your body healed first. And just like anything else, when you want to have a significant change, you have to put a significant amount of effort in there. And I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm um, not able to recall my kid's name. And so for me, I will fast and I will fast clean because I have grandkids that I need to remember their names to and they're not even here yet. Um, my kids aren't done with school. And so I want to be able to function on my own as a woman growing old and I don't have to want, I don't want to rely on anybody else to have to remind me of my life. So it's worth it to just 
fast clean. So hopefully this excited you guys and it and it made you encouraged and energized to go into your fast tomorrow clean and to make sure that you're eating that nutrient dense foods food matters too you want to make sure that you're feeding your body in a way that your body's going to also function when it's in a fasted state um you don't want to you know bog it down and have your hormones still stay out of balance because what you're doing in your feasted state as well. So pay attention to those signs and signals when you're putting food in your body. And if you're doing something that your body doesn't like, it's going to tell you and you want to make sure that you are paying attention so that you, um, you don't miss something that that's serious, um, that you can catch and change. So let me come on uh, over here to YouTube really quick and welcome everybody. Answer questions on Facebook. I'll jump over to you guys. Uh, Deb, nice to see you here. Gwen, so happy to be here tonight. I've been sick and I've been sipping on bone broth, feeling better and getting back on track. Awesome. Gwen fasted away, girlfriend, Patty morning. I'm glad to catch you live. Need to catch up. Awesome. Susan, hello from Calgary. Nice to have you here. Renee, hi ladies in current holiday course. Awesome. Susan in the holiday course. Lots of my holiday girls are here. So good to have you guys here. Patricia from Washington. Shelly, hi from Canada. I have for just over a week feeling great and eating olives and with abandoned oh nice nikita hello beautiful ladies hello to you beautiful girl jenny hello from round rock texas desiree um is here jenny hello ladies june and alumni course i really need autophagy i'm still grasping for the right word and people's names as well so frustrating uh Jenna, just time and consistency and make sure that when you're in your fasted state, it's truly fasted. And if you're not at a 20 hour fasting window, that's where you really want to work too. too. 20 hours seems to be the best healing uh, fasted window. Brenda from Houston, nice to have you here. Marie from Maryland, good to see you. Robbie, hello from the holiday course. Deb, love this community of IF women. Thanks for all the support. Oh, you're welcome. Deb, good to have you here. Um, thanks for so much for the reminder of a clean fast. I've been fooling around with putting some dairy free creamer in my coffee in the morning. Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't kick yourself out of healing, um, is what you want to think about. So no LaCroix. You can have LaCroix, just not flavored. So you have to do the blue can of LaCroix. And then I always suggest being careful about how much LaCroix you drink too, just because it's an aluminum can. So you want to make sure that you're not, you know, having multiple LaCroix a day because you're just exposing yourself to more aluminum. Uh, let's see, Zoe Blue. Tonight I had stir fried green beans with loads of avocado oil and pink salt. Was influenced by you last night. Went to Trader Joe's today. Awesome. Good for you, girlfriend. Jenny, how about the herbal tea? Uh, as long as the herbal tea's clean, you're okay. Uh, Mrs. LaCroix, 22 hours and 42 minutes into my water fast, going for 48 hours altogether. Good for you, girlfriend. Dana from Washington, health is worth it. Brain health is paramount. Yeah, nothing scares me more. Um, nothing scares me more than losing my mind. Um, you know, it just, it seems so sad. And I just have so much I want to be part of with my kids and my future grandkids and my husband. Um, and I have dementia and Alzheimer's in my family. And so it scares me. Uh, to, to, to lose that. Um, another thing that I learned today, which is a discouraging because I had kind of a difficult life growing up, is that um, uh, life stresses also um, take years off your brain health. So if your parents were divorced, if um, you were divorced, if you suffered financial stresses either as a child or in your own adult life, if there was any sort of abuse, physical, emotional, any of that in your childhood or your adult life, all of that takes years off of your brain. Um, and um, sadly, um, what they were reporting in this study was that for African Americans, it's four years of brain health for every stressful occurrence and for um a caucasians i guess I, I think that was the only two ethnic groups they talked about it was one and a half years so every one of those stressful situations takes four years off your brain health how scary is that so i had a totally stressful life in young adulthood and I, michael and i have gone through some things in our in our life together married as well and if i add it all up i'm like holy cow like i totally need to fast because i have to repair all that stress damage that was done to my brain and we don't think about that you know that's the negative stress life things happening um that cause damage to our brain as well so fasting 
would be a great opportunity to see if we can maybe reverse some of that stress damage that, you know, a lot of times we, we aren't in control of, but we still have to deal with. So that was kind of disheartening to hear uh, when I heard that. Uh, Michelle, hello. Yvonne, good to see you, girlfriend. Marmar, hello from San Diego. Janet, hello. Liz, hi from Australia. Uh, is day one of my first clean fast doing the mini course. Awesome, Liz, how are you feeling? Hopefully you're feeling well. Mary, hello from Jersey Shore. Hello, Jersey girl. Anna from San Antonio, welcome girlfriend. Donna, hello from Oklahoma. Janice, oh, you're welcome girlfriend. Amy from NorCal. Uh, Amy, where are you from in NorCal? Janet, hello. Pamela, good to see you girlfriend, I miss you. Susan from North Carolina. Um, Lori, hello. Uh, Yvonne, I think you said bingo during the health, during the um, food industry and pharmaceutical industry stuff. Yeah, it's crazy how we get manipulated. Colleen, yes, we don't need a lot of food. So many people think we need to eat way more than is necessary. Yep. Uh, Janet, yes, that's it. They want to keep us fat and sick because that's where the money is. Exactly. Joy, hi from Paradise, California. Truly a believer in better brain function through IF. Crazy cool, feeling amazing in many ways thanks to IF. Thank you for all this great information and help loving it. Oh, Joy, you're so welcome. Monica, I've gained and lost the same 30 pounds my whole adult life. It's hard to get people support and understanding when they don't consider you obese. Yep, unfortunate because we have just as many health challenges. Exactly. Colleen Holiday Course, welcome girlfriend. A Brandy, August 12th course, an alumni course uh, from Tennessee. Good to have you here. May have missed in the previous video episode, what did you say about lemon water? No lemon water in your fasted state. It will take you out of a clean fast. Um, Elizabeth, is cinnamon essential oil okay to use to freshen breath during fasted phase? I wouldn't. And awesome information, Lizette. You're welcome. Nope, I wouldn't. Um, I was going to tell you guys something and I, uh, I forgot. Um, what was I going to say? Something about something someone said. Um, I forget what it was. Oh, um, oh yes. And someone asked why they couldn't find any of my fat pictures on social media. I, I rarely show those pictures because I get beat up by so many mean women that it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. You, you could look deep in my Facebook page probably and find some fat pictures of me, but it doesn't do any good for me to post those kind of pictures. Um, people tear me up and they like they say mean things about all kinds of stuff but i just i don't know i i just don't think that proves anything to show um that to anybody um you know I, this is who i am today and i kind of rather live there and if you don't trust what i say and trust what i do and need to see a fat picture like that's okay but um you know i i don't i I really don't want to advocate weight loss so much anymore at this stage of life that I am in. I would so much rather ad advocate health increase. And so if you can increase your health, um, like we always say here, and like so many of you women have, um, have really, um, you know, seen firsthand for yourself is that when your health improves, everything improves. Your brain improves, your functionality improves, your mood improves, your um, relationships improve, your faith improves for some people, your um, weight will come off. Everything, everything will go to a normal state of being when everything's fixed. And oftentimes, for a lot of us, the weight is on when something's broken and it could be hormones are broken. It could be something in your chemistry with your body is broken. It could be your heart is broken. It could be something that you're thinking makes you broken. It could be something with your faith that's broken. Like we don't know what it is, but some something's broken because we're not supposed to be heavy. We're just not. Now, and, and heavy is a personal thing, so it's whatever your comfort level is, but if you're uncomfortable with your current state of being, then there's probably something that's broken. And I know every time I've been heavy, something with me has been broken. Um, and I, as soon as I fix it, then I go back to where I'm happy. And, um, and that's, I think, why a lot of women have a lot of hard time with the clean fasted state or just trusting the process that this is going to help you help you and getting through those uncomfortable hours or those uncomfortable feelings um because there's something that's just not 
piece together right with us. And, and we all go through those phases. We all go through those seasons. Um, and that's okay. Uh, but you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't continue to go through your life feeling broken when there's so many ways out there that you can get yourself fixed. And if this is it, and I, I almost have to laugh like this at this for myself all the time. It was like, I never thought that doing nothing would be the thing that would finally fix me because I've done so much <laughs> um, and I've worked so hard on other things and other ways to try to fix me and doing nothing ended up being the thing that worked. Who knew? So do nothing, just do nothing and be in, in a state of, of your, um, your sense of calm and, and see what happens for you. Um, I think you, you'll be very surprised. Uh, Joy, are you selling IF shirts? Would love to purchase some for me and my sister. We are. Our current shirt is, um, is the, um, it's on the Facebook page. Uh, you can go there if you're on YouTube too. It's in the shop on my Facebook page and it says, uh, fast, long, feast, well, it's super cute, three quarter, um, sleeve length. That's the November shirt. This shirt right here, Hungry's Way the Magic Happens, because everybody has been loving it since they can actually see it on, we'll re-feature these shirts for December. So this is the one I have on today. It's like a little tank. I worked out in it. I absolutely love it. And it says intermittent fasting for today's aging woman at the bottom there. So super cute. Um, and this one is super long, which I love. I, I use them for working out and they kind of cover the, the stuff in the back when you walk away. Um, let's see, Gwen, let's see. Um, I've never uh, been more than 10 pounds overweight, but gay, but have dealt with so much stress in my life that I manifested in health issues. IF for health and love that you talk about. Yep, totally. Do nothing, the next t-shirt is a, yep. Do nothing, the next t-shirt, it's a God thing. Yep, exactly, do nothing. I know, right? Okay. So Kara, my lovely assistant, so now my all my diehards are still with me. We can do the, the Bible verse for the night. So Kara um, said, when I told her what I wanted the topic for tonight to be, she said this was the Bible verse that came to her. It was Proverbs uh, 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he. So that can be what your guys' little scripture study or whatever you guys do with all that information for the night. And uh, Kara is awesome. Um, there you go. She posted it there too as well. Love this great information. Love IF. This is the only way for me. Food is a stressor for me. Yeah. So, so you know, there are good stressors and there's bad stressors. So we've talked tonight about fasting is a good stressor. Excessive exercising is a good, not excessive, I guess, intense exercise is a good stressor. A cognitive type of exercises you do for a brain is a good stressor. Uh, I, I think um, doing all of that in moderation can create a really great environment for us to thrive in as aging women. And man, wouldn't it be great if we could have this generation of women just totally um, thrive as we age? Like how awesome would that be to have an entire group of women who, who've come through this, this era and have us just beat the odds, right? Have us be able to, um, 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 Deb, I'm going to, um, read that in a second. Ha have us, you know, not be sick, not be dependent on the pharmaceutical industry, not be dependent on, you know, my poor grandmother was sick. I had to take her to the doctors like twice a week, you know, and it's like, oh, who wants to live that life as we age? Um, we can, uh, we can not have to deal with Alzheimer's, not have to deal with dementia. Let's see how many of us can get through this life without having to deal with any kind of cancers. I mean, it would be amazing. And I think, you know, <laughs> doing nothing is such an awesome way to be able to beat the odds, right? Just do nothing, but you have to do absolutely nothing. Um, to really make it work in, on your behalf and work in your favor. And I, I think that, that that's easy for us to do. Ladies, it's just taking a few hours out of your day and just like knuckling it down, just suck it up, just get through it. When you get to that point in your fasting experience, when you thrive in that environment of a clean fasted state, the, like there's nothing in your life you can't do. I mean, you'll be so empowered. You'll be so confident. You'll be so strong. Nothing's going to knock you off your feet. 
Um, so the next time you get dealt with a stressful situation, you're going to be able to get through it without turning to food. You're going to turn to a fast. And, you know, that's what's amazing about fasting. Can you imagine fasting through a stressful situation and how great that would be for your body, how great that would be for your brain? And, and one of the bummers about turning to food when we're stressed out is that stressful situations most often are very short-lived, right? So it's a short-lived, stressful, traumatic thing, whatever, however you want to describe it, that happens in your life, and you eat your way through it, and then the stressful thing gets fixed or goes away or whatever happens to it, and then you're stuck with what you're left with because of what you did during a stressful situation. And then that's where we begin the snowball effect, right? Where we're bummed out, we're guilty, we're remorseful. You know, we, we oh, we did it again. Well, I might as well just keep eating. And then we end up, in you know, sick and unhappy. So what if the next time you get stressed out, you just go, mm, I'm going to fast my way through this and see what kind of inner strength you can develop for yourself and what kind of clarity in your brain. What if you had to, what were you, what if you were in a stressful situation where you had to make some big decisions? Can you imagine how much easier it would be for you to make the right decisions when your brain is clear as opposed to your brain and your heart being all bogged down and weighed down by a bunch of food and usually when we're stressed out we're not, we're not eating kale salad we're usually eating chips and cookies and alcohol and you know all those bad things that make whatever's going on with our chemistry 10 times worse so next time you feel stressed out or you're in a stressful situation fast it away my my solution to everything is literally fast it away. When people message me and they're like, I have XYZ going on, what should I do? I say, fast it away. I have this going on, what should I do? Fast it away. Fast it all away. That way, when the situation resolves itself, you come out of it a better person. I mean, and that's just a great way to deal with things. Um, let's see, Dat She Devil Gaming. Hi, I'm new here. I've been watching your videos for almost a week now. Love the info you have provided here. Oh, you're so welcome, and thank you for being here with us. Jenny, first three days are the hardest. Yes, it, the first three days are the hardest, but you guys can get through it. So Deb says, Proverbs 4.23, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we have a whole week in our course about the emotional aspects of fasting, right? And the words we use, the attitudes we take, our body language, um, how we deal with other people with fasting, all of that stuff is important because we have to be, we have to have our strength in that too so that we don't let other people throw us off. Once we have our feet planted and we made a decision about what we want to do, nothing should knock you off. Nothing. No one's opinion, no one's little snide remarks, no one's little... Uh, peer pressure things, nothing. You should be able to stand fast in your decision and what you want. Pamela, there was no telling them otherwise. Yep, exactly. I am in a workout group and I mentioned that I do fasted workouts. They said I'm going to ruin my metabolism. There was no telling them otherwise. Well, well, why don't you wait to see what happens um, when you are done with your little workout group and see who gets the better results. Then... You, then they'll be asking you what it is you do again. So, uh, so just give it time, Pamela. You can, you'll, uh, you'll uh, have them eat and crow before you know it. Joy, love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Love that shirt. Wish I had ordered that one as well. Gina, we'll we'll do them again in December, so you can get it in December. Um, and then Kara put the t-shirt shop link too. Uh, don't don't um, hesitate. You guys are gonna want that three quarter length one too. It's gonna look super cute with some low rise skinny jeans for all you ladies who are fasting correctly in a little pair of converse or something it's gonna be super cute super cute well excedrin break your fast um robbie i always recommend that when you're fasting you fast away whatever you need to take excedrin for um when you're fasted remember your body's raw and vulnerable and your like pistons are firing off your everything your cells are trying to repair themselves and you put something like excedrin in to me, that seems scary. I fast away a headache. I fast away aches and pains. Fasting cures everything. You have to just suck it up, get through that day, go to bed early, whatever you have to do, and, and the whatever it is that's ailing you will eventually um, heal. 
I've been fasting since Thursday. I've been thinking about joining a class. Not sure I can afford at this time. Well, just jump in when you can afford it. Uh, why join a class? We just teach you uh, some of the nuances of fasting correctly and some of the social and emotional struggles of fasting and more of the scientific stuff. Um, okay, cool. Like uh, Marina, thanks for all you do. You have been such a great inspiration to me. IFNU is what has made my fitness goals click. I'm so happy um, you've added scripture. Awesome. Well, we'll keep it coming. Pamela, are you still doing consult calls? Uh, yeah, you can book one. Just email me, Pamela, and we can um, we can get you on a schedule. Okay, let's see. Anything else, and then I gotta go fast it away. I, you know, we could be uh, we could be making shirts every week um, with all of our little sayings. Uh, do the, are the three quarter sleeve shirts run small? I don't, I don't know. I'll ask my t-shirt girl. Um, she's more experienced, um, uh, than experienced with them than I would be. That would be a great t-shirt fasted away. Yep. Um, I, I, um, have a really bad habit of ordering an, an extra large in every shirt and I'm not really an extra large. I just like big blousey shirts and I like these kind of shirts to be long uh, because I like to wear them to the gym or when I'm working out or to when I go to spin class or whatever and so I like to throw them on and have the length aspect of an extra large and kind of the blousiness of it. Um, but I the I know the brand of shirt runs really true to size, so it probably just depends on how you want it to fit. I don't know if I answered your question, but I'll ask her. I'll ask her what she says. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to jump off if you guys don't mind. Think about your brain when you are fasting tomorrow and when you're almost tempted to put something in that mouth or you're almost tempted to put something in your coffee, fast it away. Just let it fast. Think about your brain. Think about the all the chemical reactions that are going on, thinking about that DNA, thinking about those cells chomping away at all the damage and putting those good um, cells right back into your system. It's worth it. Trust me. Have a good night, you guys. I will see you tomorrow night. We're going to talk about another health aspect of fasting, so make sure you jump in with us. And if you're catching this later, always leave me a comment. I will go back tomorrow morning and I will answer your comments and um, welcome you to the video. So have a good night, you guys. Bye.